high. Oh, and there we can also see the temperature. The temperature. Yeah, so... I think you've got temperature. I'm fine. No, I'm 36. I have big pleasure to be introducing Mr. Zbigniew Kuczyński, who is Chief Executive Officer in TME. Hello, Zbyszek. Hello, how are you doing? Listen, I'm fine and I'm so excited because I've been always fascinated with the way TME was built. Can you tell me how did you do it? Was it built on luck, knowledge, both? Oh, I started very early with my uh, story with uh, trading electronic components. I sold my first transistor uh, when I attend to grammar school, uh, in the high school, I uh, trading electronic components on the regular base. After this, I went to the Technical University of Łódź and I studied uh, electronics. And in the end of 80s and uh, beginning of 90s, it was uh, big changing in our political situation in Poland and me and my brother we opened uh, uh, the shop with electronic uh, components we selling the goods uh, in, by, in the shop but also we selling to the customers but uh, return to your question uh, luck yes of course a lot of luck but mostly the hardware and ideas. I think that uh, combine all these uh, components, this is received for, for our success. All right, so uh, having it in mind, what were the milestones? You can give me one, two, three, as many as you can. Okay, in 1990 we start, uh, we set up the shop with electronic components. In uh, 1993 we introduced our first printing uh, catalog. Uh, after this, we transfer. Uh, we uh, we transfer our our shop to the regular trading company, which uh, had the uh, separate departments. Uh, in uh, 1999, we launch our website and start online selling. In 2002. We separate the export department and start to export our goods to other countries. Uh, in the meantime, we develop our logistic infrastructure, including the conveyor system in our warehouse. Uh, in 2006 or 7, we start our first daughter company. It was the company in the uh, Czech Republic. In the next year, this means that in the years 2010 till now, we open more daughter companies in Europe, in China, and in the United States. We are also developing our logistic infrastructure, including mini load in our warehouse, including automatic storage and retriever system. In the last year, we built our new office uh, building and we opened our new logistics center. This is the, the, the main milestones. Come on, but there were many and you know, you enumerated all of them. Perfect. <laughs> of so, course. Um, if I want to open a successful company, potentially, what advice would you give me? Well, there are two factors, in my opinion. The first factor, this is ideas, and the second one, there are the good people. If you have uh, ideas but not good people, it doesn't work. If you have uh, 
ideas, uh, you have good, good people, but not ideas, the people will be boring and leave the company. Mm -hmm. If you combine all this together, it will be recipe for the success. Yeah, that's the recipe for great business. <laughs> I love talking to you because you are so calm and confident, but how do you feel about the future of TME? Oh, I think that our future will, will be in the bright colors. <laughs> it's mean we have now ideas, we have the best people and the future will be beautiful. Thank you very much. It was really nice talking Thank to you, you again. I think Nishikan, you say? Capacitors. This is exactly what the company specializes in. Capacitors. So when you have any questions about capacitors, capacitors. you should visit Nishikan. Capacitors. I will take you there to see if I'm right. Capacitors. Hello, listen, we are here with Nishikan, and this is Nadine, the Vice President. This is Monika Czernecka, Marketing Team. And I would very much like them to introduce the company because in comparison to their knowledge, I'm nobody. I will give them the floor, okay? Hello, I'm uh, Nadim. I'm Operating Vice President for uh, Nishikan Europe, and I would like to introduce you our company. And I'm Monika Czernecka, responsible mostly for Polish region. All right, so uh, something about Nichicon. We are a capacitor manufacturer, aluminum lithium capacitor since 1950. So we do around 1.4 billion Japanese yen, which is around 1 billion US dollar or 1 billion uh, euro uh, turnover per year. We have around 7,000 employees and we run around 17 to 20 factories worldwide. A jak już wspomniałam, odpowiadam za rynek polski, który bardzo intensywnie rozwija się w ostatnich latach. Ten trend nadal się utrzymuje. Myślę, że rynek polski całkiem dobrze sobie radzi, pomimo obecnych trudności, czy to chociażby z dostępnością komponentów elektronicznych. Jest to jeden z najbardziej interesujących rynków, jeżeli chodzi o region Europy. Ok, thank you very much for this introduction. Now let me just go ahead to Klaus who is going to introduce the second side of the business, right? Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. You. Hello, Klaus. Hello. Nice Bye. to meet you. Nice to have you <laughs> here at our booth. Absolutely. <laughs> can you just introduce us to the company? Yes. I know that you can do all with we capacitors. Can, we can do basically right. all. So, yes, yeah. uh, I'm responsible for sales at Nichicon for the automotive market in Europe. So we are happy to have you here. Uh, Nichicon has the widest selection of uh, capacitors on, on the market within aluminium capacitors. And uh, this is basically all also automotive codified. Uh, so we are very happy to support your customers in your area with, uh, with our products. So, nice to have you here. What is your favorite? If you uh, <laughs> at the moment, uh, we have uh, expanded our selection of mm -hmm. hybrid capacitors. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, Nichicon has been a, a late mover on the hybrid area, but we have meanwhile now a complete selection uh, from everything starting with 105 degree rating mm -hmm. uh, up until 150 degree ratings, so low cap, high cap. Okay. So, uh, I think this is quite interesting now. Not maybe all customers are aware of this uh, mm -hmm. uh, wide selection that we have available. So, mm -hmm. we are happy to support you with this. Uh, mm -hmm. Not only the hybrid capacitors, but also the polymer uh, capacitors has the same kind of wide selection, starting from 85 or 105 degree up to 150. Yeah. Uh, and uh, for uh, all of these, uh, we have quite recently invested in new uh, production capacity also. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have very good possibilities to support you uh, mm -hmm. with reasonable lead times in, in uh, this market at the moment. All right. So, where, do you yeah. pro where do you produce? Uh, the production of these capacitors that we see here are all in Japan, mm -hmm. uh, but we have also production sites in Malaysia and in China. So we have uh, polymer production also in China mm -hmm. and for normal aluminum capacitors we have production in Malaysia also. All right, China. so when we order, how much is the channel of you know, shipping? How quickly do we get uh, it? So the normal setup of uh, aluminum capacitors, since these are uh, products of relatively high weight mm -hmm. and relatively low cost, mm -hmm. uh, the normal standard shipping route is sea freight okay. uh, from a Far East Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, this takes a quite long time. Mm -hmm. uh, so this route is approximately six weeks by, by boat until okay. it reaches our warehouse in, mm -hmm. in Europe and then mm -hmm. it needs to be transmitted. So mm -hmm. uh, with all transit times and, and custom clearance, mm -hmm. etc., uh, you could consider up to maybe even 10 to 12 weeks or something no for right. this transportation. But this is worth waiting for. This is definitely worth <laughs> waiting for. So yeah, and in other cases when something is urgent, maybe for a start of production in mm -hmm. the early phase, it's of course also possible to choose 
use other delivery methods mm -hmm. uh, to get the parts faster in the yeah, beginning. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. It's Thank been great talking to you. Yeah. Yeah. See you next time. See you. Bye-bye. All right, and now we've got the fourth expert, fourth guy. Hello. Fourth guy. Hello. Welcome. Could you please tell me why Nishikon decided to enter the battery market? Well, Nishikon is very well known for capacitors, mm -hmm. and right now uh, we are making the next big step. Mm -hmm. Because uh, for many, many uh, decades, uh, we are known for capacitors and uh, other energy storage uh, components. And we think it's a natural evolution for us to go into the battery market. Uh, the battery market actually itself is very interesting. In 2020, it was like more or less 40 billion uh, US dollar worth. And in 10 years, it may grow to 200 billion. Mm -hmm. uh, that's crazy. And we want mm -hmm. a share of it. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you take into consideration the competition, which is high, mm -hmm. how are you going to fight them? What's your strong point? What is your advantage? So our Adventures, we are not uh, competing uh, with traditional AA or AAA uh, batteries. Mm -hmm. Now, what we are doing is uh, uh, going into a niche where we can provide, let's say, a very low charging current with uh -huh. a reasonable energy density. The mm -hmm. reason why is that we want to have uh, some kind of energy harvesting capability. Mm -hmm. And that cap capability uh, will run, for example, uh, this uh, uh, environmental sensor, yeah. which uh, is will be uh, 24 hours, uh, seven days uh, uh, a week, mm -hmm. uh, running autonomously, and yeah. that is what we want to have to uh -huh. for the future. Because currently, uh, the IoT devices are based on normal mm -hmm. ba batteries, rechargeable, mm -hmm. non-rechargeable, but mm -hmm. they have to be replaced somehow. So that's uh, that's what we want to do: non-replaceable, mm -hmm. running for years and years. Okay, so this is what you meant as you told me before about this main. Free. Yes. So mm -hmm. maintenance. Uh, yes. Yeah. So uh, talking about batteries, chargeable or non-rechargeable, yeah. uh, they all have one uh, big danger in common, which is uh, they can catch fire. Okay. And uh, for the non-rechargeable, uh, for the non-rechargeable, uh, you have to swap them out every now and then, mm -hmm. and its uh, ownership of cost is very high. Mm -hmm. uh, for the rechargeable batteries, uh, however, uh, they they long they don't have very long life. They have thousands of cycles until right. they drop uh, around eighty percent of that's capacity. The Cycle. Yeah, uh, 25,000 25, cycles. cycles, yes, uh, yeah. 80 per, uh, eighty percent after 25,000 cycles, mm -hmm. which is uh, great. And mm -hmm. uh, talking about maintenance free, uh, our goal is a set uh, to harvest uh, as much as en energy and, uh, and to run IoT devices. And I think mm -hmm. this is the future. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's, we hope that's what we can do. I think it's uh, like a best pair. Uh, to describe it, harvesting energy. Harvesting energy, yes. Yeah, I don't yes. know who came up with this, but it works. Yeah, it works perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Walter. Thank you. It was very nice talking to Thank you. Thank you very much. To you as well. Um, I've never met so many devoted specialists on one stand, Electronica, except for TME, of course. Here is Matthew. Matthew, I know you want to tell us about this film capacitor. So tell me what is so special about it, how is it made, and uh, why you would like to present it. Okay, yeah, so uh, film capacitors are another big part of uh, Nichicon's industry. Mm -hmm. It's uh, something that we're pushing at the moment uh, um, because they're becoming more in demand with EVs. Mm -hmm. um, so we're working closely with many OEMs to completely manufacture this from scratch having right. weekly meetings with their electrical and mechanical engineers together yeah. with our engineers in factory. Mm -hmm. And my job is to be the go-between to right. communicate and help perhaps design. Um, but basically everything here, we can completely tailor make, shape, mm -hmm. size, capacitance, voltage, material. Mm -hmm. That's why it looks so specific. Exactly, because this is obviously designed to fit into some other component. Mm -hmm. Um, and so every minor detail will come with very small tolerances that we have to meet. And that's what makes us so special that we can work in this way and with such accuracy. Delicate work. Yeah, delicate work. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure talking to thank you. Thank you very thank much. Bye-bye.